In 1996, Juan Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers hit 47 home runs with 144 runs batted in. He batted 314, he slugged well over 600, and was 45% better than the league average hitter. He won a silver slugger and led his team to their first division crown and playoff berth in franchise history, ultimately resulting in him being awarded the American League MVP award, one of two he'd win in his career. Here's the thing, he did not deserve it at all. Not only did Gonzalez not deserve to win despite his honestly impressive of numbers, he probably shouldn't have even finished in the top 5, maybe even the top 10 of voting. No exaggeration. Here's who else deserved to win over him. Mark McGuire, who led MLB in home runs, on base, slugging, and OPS that year. Brady Anderson, who clubbed over 50 home runs for Baltimore. Mo Vaughn and Albert Bell, who both collected over 140 RBIs and nearly walked 100 times each. All of those guys had an OPS above 1,000, but also, none of them would have been my pick to win, either. The 1996 American League MVP award rightfully belonged to the Seattle Mariners, who had one of the most talented rosters in baseball history despite missing out on the playoffs entirely. Ken Griffey Jr., owner of seven consecutive All-Star nods and gold gloves to that point, was still searching for his first MVP award, and though he'd get it the next year, this easily could have been the year. He ended up finishing fourth. Ahead of him was one of his teammates. A young 20-year-old shortstop in his first full year in the big leagues won the batting title, a silver slugger, and came just a few votes shy of winning the AL MVP award. Alex Rodriguez, who hadn't yet discovered the sweet steroid nectar that lifted him to three more MVP awards throughout his career, was clean as a whistle and easily the best player in baseball before being legally allowed to buy a beer. And yet, like Griffey, he was robbed too. So today, we're going to break down this bizarre race and how the coveted award fell into the wrong hands, robbing two Seattle superstars of adding one more byline to their impossibly great career resumes. As always guys, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for future notifications and leave a like on the video. I know, a Rod is not the ideal protagonist of any story, but if it helps anything, this is five years before the first year where he admitted to doing steroids. So as far as we know, he's clean as a whistle, and he also looks it. Through two years, A-Rod, who was still just Alex back then, had played in a little over 60 games with no real showing of success. He had speed and a good glove, but didn't inspire much confidence yet offensively. He did get a taste of real big lead magic, though, watching from the sidelines as his 1995 Mariners upset the Yankees, the team he'd be remembered playing for decades down the line. To Rodriguez, someone who once dreaded the thought of playing in Seattle, the Mariners had become a perfect home and 1996 was going to be his year. At just 20 years old, many viewed him as an MLB-ready talent heading into the season. Though he couldn't drink a beer yet, he was about to show off his muscles to any doubters watching. A lot of that strength came from milk, apparently. Listen, I won't touch a glass of milk with a 10-foot pole, but I'm also not a big leaguer, so there's some correlation there. He got going early with a hot April, including a 9.53 OPS in 17 games. In May, he batted nearly 400 with 15 extra base hits, though he drew just 4 walks to 18 strikeouts. As pure as A-Rod's hitting was, he was still a kid and needed some big league seasoning before anyone could deem him the face of the Mariners. At the end of the first 3 months of 1996, Rodriguez was putting together a marvelous season in his first full-time year as an MLB player. He was batting well over 300 and had an OPS that was 55% better than the league average hitter. As a result, he was one of 5 Mariners named to the All-Star game that year, watching his teammate Griffey start in the outfield. But before before we can talk about Griffey, we gotta talk about A-Rod's better half of this season. Yeah, the first half actually happens to be the weaker one, if you can believe that. A-Rod was unreal in the month that kicked off the second half, batting 383 with 9 home runs and an OPS north of 1.1. To a Mariners team sitting just a few games behind the Rangers in the AL West, A-Rod's graduation from great to superstar level play was a necessity if they were going to return to the playoffs. Then, he somehow got even better in August. August 1996 is one of the first great months of a Rod's career and still holds up as one of his best. He was top four or better in the league for several major offensive categories and won his first ever player of the month award thanks to 11 doubles, a 436 batting average, a 475 on base, and a 211 OPS plus. His play was unbelievable, but when you take into account that he hadn't yet turned 21 years old, his numbers in this month become historic. Rodriguez managed an amazing 1.233 OPS in the month of August that season, and in the last 50 years of MLB play, he's one of just seven players players aged 21 or younger to hit for an OPS of over 1.2 in a full month, with each of the rest of them taking place in seasons past 2009. Let's go even further. Since 1990, there have only been two players aged 21 or younger to bat over 400 in a full month of baseball. One was Alex Rodriguez, who hit 436. The other, Yasiel Puig, back in his monster rookie season with the Dodgers in 2013. And while Rodriguez was breaking out into a meteoric rise to stardom, his teammate Ken Griffey Jr. was doing his thing, and better than 
than ever to that point. After finishing top 10 in MVP voting three of the past six years, including a runner-up finish in 1994, Griffey Jr. was building his strongest case yet to rival his teammates. Jr. put up 23 home runs in the first half, adding on 10 stolen bases and an OPS over 1,000 as he cruised to yet another all-star starting knot. His best month came in July, where he achieved his then-highest career home run total for a single month with 11 home runs in just 18 July games. This was overshadowed, however, by Juan Gonzalez's best month of the season, where he clubbed 15 home runs with a 407 batting average, winning Player of the Month honors. After an injury-riddled 1995, Griffey ended 1996 with 140 games played and new career highs in home runs, RBIs, and wins above replacement. His war value was the highest of any major league player that year, but despite the otherworldly performances of him and A-Rod, the Mariners slumped around them, and Seattle fell seven games back of the division lead at the end of August. A-Rod would slump to the finish with his worst month in September, but still finish with numbers that were certainly MVP level. The Mariners, despite a nine-game win streak to move just a game behind the Rangers in late September, would miss the playoffs entirely after their miracle 1995 season. Thanks in large part to their two MVP candidates, the Mariners led the majors in runs scored, doubles, runs batted in, and slugging percentage, but the pitching staff had the highest earned run average in team history, and that's what held them back. So we know they were both great, but now let's put this all into perspective. Here is how Rodriguez and Griffey ranked among all American League players that season, bearing in mind that they finished second and fourth respectively in MVP voting. Starting with Junior, he led all American League players in war thanks to his elite defense and was top five in major power hitting categories. He didn't rank as well as his teammate A-Rod in batting average and on base numbers, and while I think Griffey's case is better than Juan Gons, I think Rodriguez stands above the pack as well. Rodriguez took home the MLB batting title, the first shortstop to do so in over 35 years, with his 358 batting average being the third highest ever for a shortstop in a full season. He was second highest in war, first in doubles, runs scored in batting average, and top Top four for weighted runs created plus and slugging. This might be the best season by a shortstop in MLB history. Why don't we put that theory to the test? We have the numbers. A-Rod's 1996 campaign is up there with the best career totals from studs like Nomar Garcia Parra and Cal Ripken Jr. Since the beginning of the expansion era in 1961, he holds the single season record for a full-time shortstop in slugging and raw OPS and ranks in the top five or better for hits, doubles, batting average, on base, and OPS plus. At 20 years old, Alex Rodriguez completed one of the greatest seasons by a shortstop ever and he did it clean. But had he won MVP, we probably wouldn't be discussing this season right now. It would be getting the widespread coverage that it deserves. Instead, Rodriguez finished second, and not only did he lose here, but he lost by the second closest margin in MLB voting history, falling just three votes short to Juan Gonzalez. The only race to outdo them in terms of closeness was Giancarlo Stanton's 2017 NL MVP victory over Joey Votto by two votes. So I guess the next logical question is, why did Juan Gonzalez win instead? How did the voters mess this up and what was their rationale? First, let's start off by saying that Juan had a great year by all accounts, one of the best of his career. Despite not making the All-Star team, he clubbed over 40 home runs, had an OPS over 1,000, and played in over 130 games. But Gonzalez didn't lead the American League in any major offensive category, not a single one. He also played a much easier position than A-Rod in right field and didn't play it particularly well. Because of his shortcomings, he also got a lot of time at DH, 32 games, or a quarter of his season to be exact. So Gonzalez had some pop, but was either at Rodriguez's level or well below him in most hitting stats and was, at best, mediocre defensively. What exactly gave him the edge then? Two words, team success. Remember the Mariners missing the playoffs? Well, Gonzalez played for the Texas Rangers who won the division that year and played the Yankees in the ALDS. Now the Rangers lost in four games, but what gets lost in that story is Gonzalez's unbelievable performance at the plate in that playoff series. Gonzalez homered five times in four games, the first player to ever homer five times in a four game playoff set. He also slugged over 1,300 with nine runs batted in. He tied Jeffrey Leonard's 1987 NLCS record by homering in four straight postseason games, a record later broken by Daniel Murphy of the Mets. He joined Reggie Jackson and Ken Griffey Jr. as the only players to hit five home runs in a single playoff series. While the Rangers blew the series around him, Gonzalez's performance likely stuck in the memory of many voters who cast their ballots for AL MVP just a month later. A guy with an average over 347 home runs coming off a record-breaking performance for his division-winning team was like 
exactly everything most writers needed to give him that first place vote. In the end, he got one more first place vote than Alex Rodriguez and secured the award for himself. So here are all three of these players' numbers up next to each other. Juan Gonzalez led in runs batted in and slugging percentage, two important stats, but not really the bona fide factors for deciding an MVP. Ken Griffey Jr. had more home runs than the rest of the bunch, 49 was his career high to that point. But Alex Rodriguez sweeps the board in pretty much every other category. Games played, runs scored, hits, batting average, on base, and OPS. Only Griffey Jr. has an edge over him in war, but both of them are above nine. So obviously, in my opinion, Alex Rodriguez should have won this MVP award. It would have been the first of his career. I think part of what troubles me most about this race is that Gonzalez would win another MVP years down the line, again, beating out deserving shortstops and Ken Griffey Jr. while only really leading the league in runs batted in. A-Rod obviously won three more MVPs in his career and didn't necessarily need this award by any means, but had he won, we could have definitively said that he won an MVP award in a clean season. Rodriguez admitted to beginning his steroid usage in 2001, feeling immense pressure to perform for the same Texas Rangers that had robbed him years prior. I'm not insinuating that Rodriguez winning in 1996 would have changed his mind about using PEDs later on, but the thought of knowing that A-Rod, who had all the talent in the world at 20 years old, could sit atop the league without any of the cheating would have been a fantastic spectacle to look back on. Instead, we have a tainted legacy, one that will never make it into Cooperstown, and rightfully so. It's also a resume that should have one more award on the mantle, one that would be unquestioned of its legitimacy. But rather than that, Juan Gonzalez is a two-time MVP, Ken Griffey Jr. would have to wait one more year, and you got this YouTube video instead. Not a great consolation prize, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching today's video. And now a word from today's sponsor. March Madness is here, and the 64 best teams in the country are ready to go. This year's college basketball tournament betting action can be found at DraftKings Sportsbook, today's sponsor. They're offering new customers $200 in bonus bets instantly after they place their first $5 wager. And if you get that $200 in bonus bets, you can try parlaying multiple tournament games together in one bet for a shot at even bigger winnings with same game parlays. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now for this opportunity. New customers use promo code OLIVE, O-L-I-V-E, bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code OLIVE only at the DraftKings Sportsbook all March Madness long. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details and any resources you might need for gambling addiction are listed down below. Thank you guys for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next time.